Boom. Fucking refined. All right, Helly. Hip, hip. <laughs> they were scary. The numbers were scary. Hello, React Native developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zoic Switzerland. In this video, I would like to cover two of the techniques used to generate the computer graphics in the TV show Severance on Apple TV, namely the use of Perlin noise to have the numbers float in a random and yet organic way, and the use of image filters to build this nice retro CRT effect. In fact, all the computer graphics, part of the clip you've just seen, were generated with React Native Skia using Remotion. And there were two tutorials which were fundamental to build these graphics. The first one is this article on Perlin Noise from Varun Vashar, and we're gonna play with some of the concepts from this article. And I feel like this is a source of truth in the sense that it contains everything we need to know about Perlin Noise. A little bit like how if you're interested in Bezier curves, there is this great primer on Bezier curves from Pomax, which is also always a source of truth for the topic. And I feel like this is the equivalent on the topic of Perlin Noise. And the second tutorial is this great tutorial on building this retro CRT effect, which we're gonna use as an image filter to build the final CRT effect in our computer graphics. We are into VS Code here, and the boilerplate is very similar to the one with, of the matrix example. We build a grid, so here it's gonna be a, a grid of number, but for now, I am displaying some rectangles. Before we display the numbers, I want us to have a little bit of fun with uh, Perlin noise to have a sense of how it works. So here, one thing I can do maybe is to create a color variable and I can pick a random color. So I have my list of colors here. And so I'm gonna do a, a round. So I'm gonna pick any values from zero to nine. The indexes go from zero to nine. I round it to have an, an integer value. Um, so that would be random times color length minus one, right? We have 10 colors. Uh, <laughs> we will have 10 digits, but we have four colors, so the indexes go from zero to three. So yeah, here I just generated some, some random grid. I can make it uh, maybe bigger. I don't know. Anyways, so completely random. And the way Perlin noise works is that we can make this randomness look more organic. And we can look at different dimensions, two, di two dimensions, three dimensions. So two dimension to, so to correlate values with each other. And so here we can use a coordinate and time, for instance, to correlate over time the randomness. Um, so let me create a simplex noise. So I'm gonna create a variable called noise and we're gonna add a seed. So the, given the same parameters, we always get the same values for that seed. And I'm gonna call it, doesn't matter, color. And now we're gonna pick a color based on the noise. So I'm gonna use a noise 2D. And I can use the X and Y value. So this gives me a value between minus one and one. So it, what it generates, right, is a, sinu a random sinusoid. So, it's, um, so it goes from minus one to one. And so we can add one to go from zero to two. We can divide by two to go from zero to one. And so now, I, instead of using a random, I can use the index here. And so here it actually doesn't look any different. It looks very much the same. But one thing we can do here is to make this x and y value go from zero to one, for instance. So I can divide it by the width of the canva and the height of the canva. And so you see suddenly the randomness uh, feels uh, quite correlated and you can play right with these values. 
Um, so this just, you know, so this is from zero to one, you can try from zero to zero five, uh, you can play with these different uh, values. But one thing I can do now, maybe let me switch the grid a little bit, is we can add a time dimension. So now we can ma make it move over time. And you see the same way here, we tried to have like a value that goes from zero to one. So we try to, to find a small value to correlate the X and Y coordinate. We can do the same with time. Um, so I get a clock here as property. And we're gonna use it as a third dimension. So this becomes a derived value because it's animated by the clock. So we'll have color is use the right value. And we animate on the clock. And we return the color here. And so here we can use clock.current. And I think that it's gonna be way too fast. So we can slow it down by using the frequency here I have. So I have a very small number, we, we can play with it. You could consider it actually even this to be way too fast. You can divide by two. And here we have our example. So it, it, it's completely random and yet here it feels very organic. And this is the base of many, many um, generative computer graphics. And this is what we're gonna use to, to make the noise uh, float around like on the TV show Severance. So yeah, you can choose a number of dimensions here. We have X, Y plus time. You can have four dimension X, Y, Z plus time. Um, but just a very useful tool when building uh, computer graphics. So now let's draw our numbers. So I'm gonna, I think, remove this for now. And instead of a rectangle, I'm gonna do a text. So the value, and we get also the font as property. So we have text, the font, x, y, um, and some color. I'm gonna use, the, I have a foreground variable. So the text, we're gonna pick a digit randomly. So we have a list of digits here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here. And so we're gonna pick randomly. So again, math round of um, math random times, yeah, times nine, right? Digits length minus one. Um, oh, let's close the tag. Looking good, uh, here you can tell, I mean, actually we cannot really tell, but the numbers are not centered in the grid. Um, so I can do, I think, yeah, so plus size. So we center it to the middle of the square. So plus height divided by two. Thank you, Copilot. And then we're gonna measure the text. So we're gonna get the position, so we're gonna do font measure text of the text. And so if, let me call this one origin because that's the or, it's gonna be the middle of the square, so it's, that's also what we're gonna use as the origin of the transformation. So up. let me put it in here. And yeah, here, okay. And so I think we can do x equals origin x plus minus the width, half of the width of the text. And same for the y axis, but in the other direction because the positions are, uh, we go from a top to but uh, top to bottom. So now these should be nicely centered. And one thing we can do, so is to use the clock to, to make these values um, float around nicely. So I'm gonna, I think, do a group. 
and the transform transform animated property. I think I should have like a bogus import somewhere. Anyways, doesn't matter. So transform is a derived value on the clock. And we're going to return uh, translate x, translate y. And so translate x, we're going to use a noise 2D. So here we want we wanted to move it on the x and y axis, but we don't want the we want the value to be correlated over time, but not between the x and y axis. So this is why we're going to use 2D with x and time, and 2D with y and time, because we want it to be correlated on the x axis over time and on the y-axis over time, but not the two with each other. So uh, noise, noise 2D, we take the x position and the clock value, so clock.current, and same for y. And so you see, now it moves very fast, and only by one, write this, generate minus one to one. So only by also small amounts. So here again, we're going to add the frequency to slow down. Yeah, and we're going to add some amplitude. So to go uh, maybe from instead of minus one to one, minus 10 to 10. So here I have A, which is 10. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you could argue that's uh, maybe even too much, but one thing I can do here also, I'm going to add the origin of transformation. I can add like maybe some scale, zero mm, five. I still think this ten amplitude is way too much. And yeah, you see, you <laughs> that's interesting. So I have a bug in the code, and I noticed it because the way they move actually feels a bit too. Um, organic, right? You see that it, I don't know if you see it, but it is, I see like some sort of cycle and I think, and I just noticed it's here because I used the wrong value. So now it's, yeah, now it's, it feels really random. That's cool. Um, this amplitude is way too big, I think, but let's see. Now, one thing we can do is to add a touch like on the TV show. So we're going to add a touch handler. And we're going to create an animation value for the pointer. So uh, on touch, use touch handler. And we're going to have pointer is a use, uh, use value of a vector so I can just do yeah, this. And when the gesture is active, we assign the position to the pointer. So pointer.current equals pointer. Uh, we can pass this as a property here. So pointer, here I can use skia read only value of a vector. And now one thing we want to do is that we we have the origin of each number, so the middle of each square. We look at the distance between the pointer and the, the origin. If the distance is zero, we put a, a big scale, so like on the TV show, and select the number, they get bigger and then smaller. And the further away you are, uh, the smaller the number is going to be. So the scale here, we're going to interpolate it. So I think I have a radius variable here, which is 125, but we're going to play with this number. We can put any value that uh, feels good, but we're going to do scale 
and we're going to interpolate on the distance between the pointer and the origin. So yeah, exactly this. So the distance between the pointer and the origin goes from zero to radius. If um, we are at zero, so if we are really selected the number, we, we want to do something big, maybe 1.5. If not, we want to do something small, um, zero three maybe, and we want to clamp. We want to clamp things so we don't go below and above this scale. Here I can move my finger around nicely and the scale is nicely interpolated. The numbers float around in a random and yet it feels very organic way. So a really fun example, but now to add the retro look, we're going to build the CRT effect. And the technique we're going to use to build the CRT effect is quite interesting because previously we've used image filters to build all sorts of advanced effects. We had a tutorial on glass morphism, so we used displacement map. We used Perlin noise as a displacement map. We used blur image filters and so on. Here, we're going to write a shader, which, which is going to be used as an image filter. So we're going to receive the bitmap of our scale drawing as a uniform of our shader and then use it to build any kinds of transformations. Here, we're going to build the CRT effect. And there is this great tutorial on how to, to build the CRT effect. And it's much easier than what you, you believe. Basically, you need to, to build two curves. So this curve here to curves the pixels around the edges, right? So in the middle, it feels like a straight line. And then on the corners, depending on the curvat curvature level, it's going to be more or less curved. And the second curve we're going to need to build is simply this uh, sinusoid which needs to be slightly above zero to one. Uh, and with the frequency you you can choose to have the lines, so to have the opacity go from uh, barely zero to one. And so that's all there is to it. And at the end, there is a boost in uh, brightness. So three steps based on two mathematical curves, this one and so for the sinusoid and this one for the curvature of the pixel. So in fact, I can even plot these, uh, these values. And it's not the first time that these advanced effects, they can feel overwhelming, but sometimes it's all about just finding the right mathematical curve and then we are good to go. Um, one of the examples I think was the rubber band effect, right? Where we wanted to is get, getting harder and harder to pull. And it's all about plotting, you know, some sort of function that gives you the different values that you want, and then that you can use it to, to build the effect. So here it's exactly the same. Uh, let me um, so replace the values quickly. So this we can do x here, here, and I think here it should be only one letter. So I'm going to just do c. And I can add a slider for C. And we're going to look. So we're going to normalize the coordinates from 0 to 1. So we're going to look into this square, right? 0, 1. And so actually, that looks good. So we can, here the curvature is 1. We know it. We, you see, the more the value, the straighter the line gets to like something here completely straight. And so, oh. I think, let me remove maybe X, no. So wait, up, so zero, zero, one. So the only problem here I have, so let me make it bigger, perfect. So we have zero, one here. So this is the square we're gonna look at that represents our coordinate. So that looks good. So we have the, the curving. The only issue I have is that at zero, we're at zero. So I think we can just add some, some offset maybe, zero, one. And now it looks more or less, yeah, to be what, what we want. And the second curve that we need is this sinusoid, which we have here. I can plot it as well. And so let me replace uh, some of the values. So let's do x. 
so here we are just going to replace it by one value, so frequency maybe f. Yeah, I can add slider for f. And yeah, I think that's already, that's it. So here we have the opacity going from 0, 1 to 1. So very, not 0, like a very small value to 1. And the frequency is going to decide how our effect look. Here we have 10 as maximum value. We want to, to add something much, much bigger. But let's jump into our code. And now I can add. So I want to wrap my drawing into the CRT component. And here I use a runtime shader as a image filter. So we have the source of the shader here. And I have the two functions which correspond to the two uh, graphs we've just seen. Here I use a, a layer paint because we use transformations in the in the group, right, with the the scale and the and the translate. So here I really want to apply it on the bitmap of the of the drawing. But if we didn't have any transformations, we could just um, use the regular paint on every element. And so here we get the image as a, a shader uniform and we can write our shader. So here we just take the coordinates, so x, y here, and return the color. So you see that nothing happens, but maybe, um, let me, I can return some other color, so I can return just red, right? So here we have uh, red, green, blue opacity, so just red, and maybe um, we can take the, base color and the blue value here and you see like the numbers they kind of appear so we can play with our shader and do yeah whatever we want right so the first thing we're gonna do is to apply the curvature so here we know that we want a value between that goes from zero to one so i'm going to create uv which is so, I mean, here Copilot is a bit ahead of the game, but we're going to divide the x, y value by width and height to get a value from 0 to 1. So, we divide it by resolution. And then we can curve the value. So, curved uv equals, yeah. And finally, we can do the eval on the image. So, the lookup. And here, we're, instead of using the x and y value, we're going to use the curved UVs and return the base color. So here we have a black screen and I think it's because, so now, okay, this value is also from zero to one. So we need to go back to uh, width and height. So yes. So that's actually, we can see the curvature. I can make it more obvious by making the value smaller. So now it's like super curved, but I can take like maybe four. And one thing I can do also is to just to, so if the curved value x is less than zero or yeah, so I'm, I, I want to clamp the value and so if it's uh, you know below and above zero and one and you see and like maybe i just return um let's me let me just return red for instance so you see so here i'm going to use uh black i think okay so we have our curvature now we can add the skyline lines so I have like the opacity changing in a sinusoid, and we need to do it. It's a grid. We need to we need to do it on both uh, dimensions. So we are going to do multiply the base color by the scan scan line. So we do it on the x axis and on the y axis, 
and I see it already. But okay, this looks a bit too. This was a bit too easy. Let me show you. Um, let me add a fill. Yeah. So erase uh, the drawing essentially. Okay. So of course here it looks perfect. So here we can modify the the values to to modify the the intensity of um, of the effect, and um, you can also modify the base so the opacity here. But it's really all about you know finding the right uh, curve, and yeah we can play with different values to to obtain different effect. Uh, let me remove the fill here and yeah that looks good and the, the last thing we can do is to add a boost in brightness so I'm gonna go back here to the shader and we can add to the base color we can multiply by 1.5 so plus 50 percent maybe for every color so vector 4 except the opacity which is one, so you can do um, vector three of, well, yeah, let's do 1.5. To have a nice boost, so it's more, it looks more white, kind of. And uh, yeah, I think it, um, I'm convinced it looks really cool. And this is a fun new technique uh, to build image filters. And in fact, I think this image filter, this CRT image filter could be built with a combination of so curvature, we could use a displacement map. Uh, we could also use, um, like some blending on a grid image to have like the nice uh, scan, scan lines, but it's much faster to just play with a, a shader like this. So a really fun way to, to build an image filter. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. I love that now we can watch our favorite TV show and work our way back into code and look at the primitives which were used to generate uh, some of the computer graphics. Here, Perlin noise to have randomness into the drawing and yet, it feels very organic and the image filters as shaders. So in fact, the CRT effect, we could have built the CRT effect with different composition of shaders, displacement map, uh, blending modes. But here, you know, just a, a fun and fast way to, to build an image uh, filter using a shader where we receive the bitmap of the, of the drawing as a uniform. And these shaders, they can feel overwhelming, but at the end of the day, there were only two mathematical curves we needed to have uh, correctly, and then we could apply it to our uh, shader. So really fun tutorial. We have way more fun examples to be looking at into the near future. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon, and until next time, happy hacking. Daydream, I fell asleep amid the flowers. For a couple of hours On a beautiful day Daydream I dream of you amid the flowers For a couple of hours Such a beautiful day Such a beautiful day